Hello everyone, today we talk about the Duchy of Bohemia, known in Czech as uh, Czesk uh, Knizhek V, uh, I'm surely not pronouncing it correctly, so uh, Ducatus Bohemia in Latin, Herzogtum Böhmen in, in German, founded around the 70s of the 9th century uh, AD, uh, and um, say promoted to kingdom in 1198. Um, we have already appreciated Bohemian history on multiple occasions, from the history actually of, of medieval Bohemia, overall the, the duchy, uh, I talked specifically about the foundation of in fact permissive power, um, beginning uh, you know, of this era, uh, we talked about the kingdom, we talked about the Hussite wars, we talked about the Great Moravia just recently then encompassed, in fact, also the Bohemian lands. We'll see it uh, briefly now. Um, so we're not stranger, uh, really, to, to the country. But for completion, we uh, should look at the, the, the ducal phase, fundamentally, uh, of this polity. Because um, it tells you how, you know, uh, tightly... Right, and this is the impression really that Bohemia gives um, throughout the, the high Middle Ages. Um, this this power managed to essentially put itself together, uh, winning essentially a, a an important position within the same um, say within the influence of this Germanic um, Empire, uh, and it's so to be become essentially part of it, as you know, differently from Poland. Um, and Hungary surely had also very strong German influence, uh, but were not incorporated to Bohemia. It, however, was also in fact the closest um, uh, country, both geographically and culturally, to uh, to Germany. At some point, it's even difficult properly to distinguish um, the Germans from the Slavs. Um, there is a lot of uh, of commixtion way before the. Uh, the mere uh, Ost Zitlung is just how uh, these peoples came to distinguish themselves politically and ethnically on the basis also of the contrast, right, actually, of the, the, with the compaction of essentially the Eastern Frankish Kingdom, it, its rise to, to empire, uh, and the, uh, in fact, the uh, attempts that were made from, from an early days, of the one of Charlemagne, really, to take over Bohemia, but with great difficulties, as we've seen also for Moravia, given that uh, these lands were uh, not just, let's say, difficult to centralize from, just ask the same the same natives uh, there, and how long it took before giving uh, properly a pro um, political and institutionally uh, compact profile um, to the country. It was not extremely difficult f for them, in a sense, but also, the, the resistance that they put up and uh, the methods that they used um, in this. Uh, we also made videos about how relevant these um, territories were, uh, especially during the 10th century, uh, the one of the Magyar invasions that were destabilizing heavily um, the eastern part uh, of, of Germany, and how there was always um, an inner intention between... Um, these peoples and their Slavic subject, uh, the, the Magyars I'm talking about, um, and their Slavic subject, and how Bohemia fundamentally represents a departure from the more subservient and, in fact, subjugated Moravia that was brought uh, under by the Hungars uh, after their migration, in fact, would, would be the Hungarian plane. Well, uh, the, the, the Bohemians that were more distant, naturally, but also understood better, like, given that they had the opportunity there to choose, that it was better to support uh, a more stable power, like uh, the Frankish one, uh, the, the Eastern Frankish one, uh, would essentially side with this, in spite of the uh, competition of the conflict, uh, and uh, manage to, again, consolidate that, that space that would include also Moravia, in fact, historically, uh, within the kingdom uh, of Bohemia. Right then, for uh, late medieval Bohemia, we'll make other videos. Um, we made it for, for Moravia, for that matter, medieval Moravia overall. So, uh, this will all hopefully uh, follow. Um, so, 
the Duchy of Bohemia was so called because it was essentially monarchic in, in profile, right? Uh, the idea of the Ducatus led by a Dux is, in fact, the, the, let's say the a hallmark of a military um, uh, re- regime, right? And uh, this fits the Western Slavic um, warlike spirit. Uh, in a way, but mostly the Metus hostilis, in fact, deriving from these uh, power, more powerful neighbors, the Germans, the Magyars, and so the need to have a single head, right? As we will see now, and as you know, uh, presumably Bohemia itself has a pretty, you know, specific geographic boundary, but geopolitics does not exist, so it was not obvious, actually, for, for a policy to simply emerge and consolidate, especially with that level uh, of prestige from within the the Holy Roman Empire uh, to even become, in fact, a, a, a kingdom, right, a, a realm within properly the, the crowns of, of the Holy Roman Empire, which which is interesting, um, you know, itself. Um, as we were saying before, uh, the Duchy was formed around the seventies of the ninth century by Czechs, fundamentally, as part of, however. Uh, the uh, greater Moravian realm that, as you know, encompassed an important amount of lands, very, you know, um, very unstably, telling the truth. Um, Bohemia was, like, based on its own. Moravia um, was also looking at a more Danubian dimension, even beyond that. Um, However, Bohemia fundamentally survived. Um, Moravia, at least as de facto an, an independent power, um, while the latter, uh, in fact, was instead disintegrating, right, after especially the mm, premise lit, the, this is famously enough, a uh, premise lit, the, the dynasty that ruled uh, in Bohemia fundamentally until the the, the 14th century. Uh, and so very ancient dynasties, like like the Arpads, the Piast, right, you know, that really made the history, the, the multi-secular um, history of these uh, countries and managed to compact like uh, a solid uh, dominion. Well, the Duke Spitinev uh, swore fealty to the Eastern Frankish king Arnulf of Carinthia in 895, where after the disgregation of the Carolingian Empire, thus also the enucleation of a, uh, say, precise, you know, Eastern Frankish uh Dominion that, as you know, was composed by different, say, ethnic uh, duchies, within which also the, that were German, right, um, and uh, starting to, to be probably in a national sense, at least for the for the elitistic, classicistic um, terminologies, Teutonic invented um, in the the monasteries of Fulda in Saint Gall for for the the annals uh, of the kingdom, etc. Uh, and that at this point, he said, included this Slavic duchy, right? Uh, at least, you know, it would come to be so, but it's already evident from this point that the Bohemians permanently un- are within the sphere of influence of the Eastern Franks. Um, the main connection would be uh, Bavaria, historically, which at this point uh, of the, um, say, uh, property of the Polska region, um, era, uh, still had its capital, it's a big word for, for the times and places, but, you know, the, the centric list of, of the ruling sovereign, uh, in um, in Regensburg, right, the ancient Redas Bolna, um, and this connections, even at the passage, and we will see it now, of, of, of the of the Eastern Frankish crown to Saxony, Franconia, etc., would remain always the lines more, more directly in contact with uh, with Bohemia, right? There is a triangle specifically between Hungary, uh, Bavaria slash Austria, at least in part, as it would separate, the, the latter would separate from the first, and Bohemia and Moravia. That remain also like a, a broader frontier area. We, we talked about it at some point. It will make a video about the Battle of Markville, explain it uh, to, to full extent. And that, uh, as we have already observed in the um, historical region uh, series chapters, about the, these countries uh, really would always play um, with, with, with each other, right? Deadly at some point, at least for the stability. 
um, of, of the same countries, Bohemia would be knocked out basically by, by the Habsburgs, right, in the late 13th century, after the King Ottokar II had managed actually to create the largest uh, dominion in the Holy Roman Empire, including Austria uh, and beyond. Uh, so while the Bohemian dukes of the uh, Premislid, I will say Premislid if you will mind, um, dynasty in, in the English form, let's say, uh, at first ruling at um, Prague Castle, right, um, and Levi Radic, that is another fortress uh, three kilometers northwest of Prague, with which um, the Premislids, in fact, you know, at some point also ruled, brought um, further estates under their control. Right, this was the the process. We do not much uh, do not know much about the Premislid origins. We know them from this ninth century. We think they may have uh, stemmed from uh, the Milmir um, uh, dynasty of uh, Great Moravia, but we have no certainties. In any case, there were Czechs uh, that were based uh, in in Bohemia around Prague, and that's how basically this Kradny emerged among the others. It was admittedly already well located. Um, and th- wh- one interesting aspect about this country is that uh, the Premislids would rule in this land until, in fact, the early 14th century, without, um, not just without discontinuity, dynastically, but also fundamentally managing to monopolize um, control, like, uh, as, as a family, um, both in Bohemia and Moravia, so that even when the nobility historically challenged this uh, monarchic power, still... Uh, the only uh, people who ever came to the throne were competing for that were often brothers, right? One ruling over Bohemia, one on, over Moravia. And this in part favored, uh, or mirrors, by the way, both cause and consequence of the for, uh, further compaction of this domain. Christianization was key, naturally. Um, Bohemia was evangelized, starting by the mission of St. Cyril and Methodius that had basically left for, mostly for Great Moravia made a couple of videos about this this um, Christianization passage. Um, it stuck around just like for, for the, this broader lands because of the obvious needs of the uh, of the, uh, the elite of having a more stable uh, infrastructural administrative base to rule from and and boosting also the the necessary unitary hierarchical ideology to get things together. Um, it was, um, by the way, it was an evangelization continued um, after the, um, you know, this was the Byzantine mission, right? Then the the West, the Westerners were always kind of in between, even Cyril and Methodius technically at some point were acting on behalf, on behalf of the Pope rather than um, the uh, the Emperor and the Patriarch of Constantinople. Um, but again, the main partners of the Bohemians were the Germans, right? It would be the Frankish bishops of Regensburg, as we were saying, and also Passau, to get on the longer run most of the job done, right? And and of course, again, this fit the broader uh, framing of of Bohemia within the Holy Roman Imperial um, system. Uh, in 973, the Diocese of Prague was founded through the joint efforts of the Duke Boleslaus, uh, the second Boleslaus, the, the Pius, there's reason, and Emperor Otto I, protagonist of the Renovatio Imperi, if we can call it this way, I make a playlist even properly about this topic. Now, the late Duke Wenceslas I of Bohemia, known as uh, the good also uh, saint, actually, um, get, was killed by his younger um, brother Boleslaus in 935 became, in fact, the patron of Bohemia, right? Uh, and uh, miracles, of course, being uh, you know attributed to him. This figure becoming key in the uh, developing of a um, uh, Czech Christian uh, spirit, um, properly based on 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 the monarchy, on the land. Uh, as such. Now, while the um, Bohemian lands were occupied by the Polish king Boleslav I at the, um, at the beginning of the, say, the, the, end, the very end of, of the 10th, at the very beginning of the uh, 11th century, uh, and other internal struggles uh, were 
naturally shaking the Permisla dynasty that was trying, in fact, to, to compact this power out of an area that had historically not uh, had such monarchic uh, organization. The uh, Duke Vladivoy uh, received in the early 11th century Bohemia as a thief from the hands of the uh, Eastern Frankish king Henry II, the last of the Ottonians, right, that had emerged like from the Bavarian branch. Um, we are in, in fact, 1002. So that the duchy becomes at this point properly, this is the date, an imperial state uh, of the Holy Roman Empire, right? So uh, part of, of the empire with specific representation and right to vote in the imperial diet, right? So they had the, the, the rulers of these estates were able to exercise the this, this significant rights uh, and privileges that were uh, immediate, meaning that only the imperial authority could intervene at that point to, for whichever reason, to mitigate that. If you know, of course, that authority was also capable of doing it, which politically is also another story, and that's what spices the whole thing up. But that's the moment which you know that uh, officially uh, the Bohemians are part of the Holy Roman Empire, because um, previously they were just um, among other uh, Slavic, Western Slavic peoples that had not yet um, necessarily been considered as such, right? They were essentially sort of client states uh, that in part were even destroyed by the Franks, other managing to, to achieve set complete independence. Um, uh, think, think Poland again. Um, and in this case, instead, you have an, an important enucleation. And as we will see now, that it, it was the same German power mechanisms that would allow Bohemia to remain fundamentally autonomous on their own, because this country was practically um, uh, useless to try to force down with arms, because it was modest enough, could support in part the same imperial authority, it was on the, say, far eastern frontier, especially from the perspective of mostly the the Frankish, the 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 Franconian, I mean, the, the, the Swabian uh, rulers that um, were at some point more interested in, in the Rhineland, in southern Germany, in Italy, and so on. So Bohemia, uh, at this point, was um, simply compacting from within, it didn't have dramatic expansion, um, uh, expansionistic ambitions or capabilities, especially in these first centuries. So that was a role like uh, accepted by both um, and this is not to say that Bohemians were not capable even of intervening in force in the same Germany at some point uh, to support imperial authority but even to challenge it All right um, the duchy of Bohemia would be, uh, would be raised um, to uh, an hereditary kingdom when the Duke Ottokar I we're talking about the end of, of the 12th century uh, ensured uh, his elevation by the German king Philip of Swabia at the time of his power struggle with Otto IV. Um, I made a video about that specifically in 1198. Uh, so that the Bohemians signed it with the Ohnenstaufen, the Permisleds even married into them. Um, and they would remain, again, with this for, for another century, basically in power, uh, until the, the the literal ex male extinction uh, with the death of Wenceslas III in 1306. The lands encompassed by uh, the Bohemian Forest, the Ore Mountains, the Sudates, and the Bohemian Moravian Highlands uh, were settled by um, Slavic uh, people uh, uh, already from the mid 6th century. Um, this lands, as you know, had historically been inhabited by the uh, for, by the Celts, uh, the boy that gave the name to the region, then by uh, Germanic peoples such as uh, the Marcomanni, for example, and so on. Then, with the migrations um, of the late antiquity, the early Middle Ages, you have the same 
some groups moving away, mostly the Germanic Confederacy, to other lands, and the Slavs from the east gradually settling uh, in this in this place. Naturally, there was also superimposition of different um, different populations, right? Kelto, German, Slavic, as we were saying before. It, it's it's very difficult, even before the Ost Zidlung that surely injected a lot, properly, of, of German um, colonists. Uh, into Bohemia, like uh, by by the will, by the way, of the same local kings, um, that we will see maybe another bit better how they would um, handle the mechanism for their own, uh, you know, for general benefit of the counter telling the truth. Um, would um, we're, we're quite um, we're quite akin to one another, right? It's difficult again to simply make the case of language or you know some kind of political allegiance, right? Where's the boundary here? Yes, Bohemia, as we've seen, is is delimited by this natural, natural barriers to a degree, but that, that, that doesn't stop really anyone from pouring in, at least in, in, in small groups, especially of settlers and so on, that uh, were, generally speaking, in the high middle ages, very welcomed just because of the uh, prior phase of historical depopulation, in in the in the early medieval period, and just the necessity of having more manpower, more uh, labor force, uh, and just communities that could balance um, with others politically um, for the benefit of of the Dutch uh, at this point. Um, the term Bohemia uh, appears, uh, however, from the Frankish sources for the first time in the ninth century. The Romans knew them as the, the, the places Boyaenum, more or less, right after again the, the, the Gallic, the Celtic boy. Um, Emperor Charlemagne um, considered this region conquerable, right? So much so that he invaded it himself in 805 as part of, of the general. Um, compaction of the eastern borders because now the the Saxons were down and even the prior uh, Slavic allies that had helped the Franks subjugating them that were the next frontier, right? So they became a problem. Um, the Carolingian emperor uh, laid siege to the fortress of Kanburg um, that uh, we just know being uh, on the left bank of, of the Elbe River in uh, around in, in Bohemia, we do not know the exact location. What happens, as usual, uh, with the Western Slavs during these attempts of the Franks of conquering them, is that while not really being quite uh, willing to engage in open battle against the you know the, the Carolingian heavy cavalry uh, and so on, they prefer to essentially enclose themselves in their fortresses, their hill, um, you know, on on hilltops to, to take refuge into deep forests and to harass the uh, imposant Carolingian armies with all the logistical system, supply line, uh, launching guerrilla attacks and wearing them out before they could effectively conquer anything useful, right? Because uh, there was not really a, a broader center in this land yet, um, and uh, so you could make a tremendous effort to storm one of these hilltops, of taking it by by hunger or something, but you you couldn't really take down this land um, in, in one shot or one blow, right? Um, so after 40 days, uh, the emperor had in fact to withdraw his forces on that occasion for the sheer lack of supplies, um, except, uh, so you know, this was the thing, that the country was ravaged anyway, so that when the Carolingians came back in 806 um, and causing further damage um, to the locals, uh, the Bohemians finally, um, say, submitted formally to the empire, so starts these kind of, uh, again, tributary um, relation, right, also containing Bohemian forces sent um, into... Carolingian uh, armies and other, you know, services due, and at some point they, they would refuse, and they were, or, and, or they would launch, uh, kind of raids themselves into the Eastern Frankish territory, 
uh, and and this tit for tat strategy would go on for 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 quite a while, right? Until this land was the the minor one compared to um, among these powers would um, finally be just included in in the broader system. A system, however, that um, was again elective, right? The Eastern Frankish Kingdom. Um, what remained as a political and territorial reality, but it, it disgregated de facto um, in terms of, of, of cohesion uh, during the mid 9th century. So that's Bohemia. Um, at that point, uh, not just was just one of the um, ethnic duchies of, of the making up the Eastern Frankish Kingdom, but fell. Under the influence of the uh, of the great, so-called Great Moravia, which was established, as we've seen, some time around the 30s of the 9th century, um, the uh, Moravians were uh, again they they ruled nominally on an important amount of lands in, in Central Europe. There is an actual issue uh, regarding the name because we don't know whether this was actually the Great Moravia. There was some s- sort of Serbian one in the south across the Danube. That this was um, um, how the, this uh, domination was rendered visible by the Carolingian destruction of the Avar Khaganate. So basically the re, um, reconnection of the western and the southern Slavs until the Magyars arrived and the party was over for everyone involved. But still at this point, uh, during the clashes between the Franks and the Moravians, the um, uh, Moimir dynasty duke uh, Svatopluk um, I, um, so the greatest Mor- uh, Moravian ruler, reached an agreement with the Eastern Frankish Kingdom, Louis the German, confirming the latter's Bohemian dominion. That is to say, Bohemia fell still, even at the peak of the great Moravian power, under more, more like the, the sphere of influence of, of the Franks. Um, when the Magyars arrived, again, the great Moravia basically collapses, and it beca- it, in the, the land of Moravia, uh, proper become a sort of launch pad for the um, Magyar invasion of uh, Magyar Slavic, right? Because also these subjects would participate in invasion of the Eastern Frankish Kingdom. Um, this uh, state of affairs brought Bohemia to to entrench within itself. Um, at some point, they would also participate, right, uh, to this kind of, um, they took advantage of this kind of instability. Um, And around the beginning of the 10th century, it began to to properly consolidate, not much as as a, you know, uh, patched together tribal um, confederacy, but properly an independent principality, right? taking on some dynastic, uh, concentrated power uh, features, right? Already in the 80s of the uh, uh, 9th century, the promiscuous prince Bozhivoy from the aforementioned Levi Hradec, initially uh, a deputy of the same Duke Svatopluk uh, in the area, that is ruling on his behalf, um, had been baptized by the great Moravian uh, Archbishop Methodius uh, of Thessalonic. Um, this had occurred uh, actually in 874 um, and uh, moved his residence to the castle of Prague, right, to, uh, and, and started to subjugate uh, this, this important uh, basin right of the Vltava uh, river, uh, running essentially southeast along the Bohemian forest, and then um, the, in the north across Bohemia, right. Uh, it uh, eventually uh, merges with the Lava River at uh, Mielnik. Uh, but uh, it, this is properly the basin around which a uh, promiscuous power will start con- consolidating, and also properly the one of the Czech nation on the longer run to to, to base. Um, there was some, uh, let's say, um, attempt of Great Moravia to um, 
to retake control over the Bohemian Principality before the Magyars uh, finished it off. Um, at that of Borivoy in 888-90, um, uh, until in 895, uh, the latter's duke uh, son, Spithinyev, um, uh, together with the uh, Slavnik, that is properly, possibly white Croat in origin, Prince uh, Vit, uh, Vitizla, swore um, allegiance to the Eastern Frankish King Arnulf of Carinthia in Regensburg. So, signaling quite clearly from international standpoint where Bohemia was to uh, drawing a uh, uh, com- legitim- uh, legitimation from and support from. Now, um, Spitinyep and his younger brother Ratislaus would uh, rule essentially over central Bohemia um, around Prague um, and they were able uh, even during the uh, worst times uh, of Magyar um, I- invasions to retain the own realm defending it uh, effectively considered that at this point the, the same Frankish frontier was essentially uh, eaten up in the uh, eastern mark when uh, the, the the enormous um, Frankish and partly the Slavic army was defeated at Pressburg uh, slash Bratislava in 907 by the by the Magyars that at that point began again to, to really launch um, this hammering series of raids into the Eastern Frankish Kingdom. It wouldn't be stopped um, until the, the mid 10th century, right? Uh, Bohemia was, as we've seen, sheltered, was uh, more northwest than, than these places. Um, it was mostly that the Bavarians had to cope with uh, with the Magyars, right, in face to face. But the Bohemians contributed uh, with uh, their own forces um, to such um, to such defense. Let's say um, the arrival of the Magyars also cut off um, Bohemia from the prior. Byzantine influence that we have seen with the mission of uh, Cyril and the Methodius. Uh, and definitely um, brought the country for good within the orbit of Eastern uh, France, even though during the, the latter was facing a, a deep crisis, which in fact the Bohemians uh, took advantage also to just uh, consolidate as much as possible the, their own their own power. Um, the dukes paid tribute to the Bavarian once in exchange for the confirmation of the peace treaty because they really didn't trust one another per se. They had historically been enemies, right? Uh, subjects forced uh, into this condition by essentially the, the, the Frankish expedition. But they, they understood that in this quite delicate moment, such a hot frontier with the hungers, uh, their cooperation was more uh, advantageous. Ratislaus' son, Wenceslaus, uh, ruling from 921, um, was um, accepted as a hand of the, was, was still the, the Bohemian Tribal Union, right? He was uh, in conflict at the time with uh, Arnulf of Bavaria, Arnulf II, a member of the Lutpolding dynasty, who had succeeded in fact, Arnulf the um, first uh, of, of Carinthia, uh, and uh, he um, did, uh, and together with him, he would challenge uh, also his mighty ally, right, the, the rising. Uh, Fowler, Henry, um, the Duke of Saxony, who um, would become, in fact, also King of Germany uh, himself. And so this is how, basically, the Ottonians and the Permisnets 
entered in um, antagonism uh, in uh, initially, right? Ventures allows Wu needed uh, support for his ducal authority. He was starting a plan of um, you know consolidation of of the church, uh, uh, etc. Et uh, submitted to Henry the Fowler in 929. After this, however, he was murdered by his brother uh, Boleslaus I, who actually passes for uh, uh, actually a, a good ruler. At least he is uh, part of this this drama and this this sin, All right? But he was a warlike um, individual and. Uh, carried out impressive, in fact, uh, military feats right after he assumed the Bohemian throne in 935. In fact, Boleslaus conquered um, Moravia and Silesia, right? He even uh, uh, arrived as far as Krakow uh, in the east that, as you know, w would become the fact that it was already the most important center in Poland, eventually chosen um, um, f by the PS as basically the, uh, the 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 place from which uh, the the kings of the realm rule from, Boleslaus offered um, opposition to Henry's successor, King Otto the First. So there is this uh, initial. Uh, contrast between the two because Boleslaus is, is powerful enough. He has substantially widened um, uh, the Bohemian domain, and uh, Otto is um, naturally a powerful ruler, but he has still to consolidate his uh, his power in Germany. The Bohemian stops paying the due tribute to the monarch. And in 936, he went on uh, attacking uh, the uh, Thuringian allies of the Saxons uh, in the northwest uh, of Bohemia, uh, showing he could properly uh, face, uh, also victoriously, uh, in open field, uh, the, the Germans. Th this is a big deal. Uh, it tells you how resourceful at this point uh, the Promislits had become, even in terms of strengthening uh, properly the, their military retinues, giving them, as we've seen through these wars of expansion, also something to reward them on. So uh, here, you know, the, the Eastern Frankish Kingdom will not get the full kind of uh, Western Frankish type of feudalism until the mid 12th century, right? So Bohemia, even less. But technically, that process of aristocratization and of um, feudalization in general, but this private clientele depending on the you know, the ruler, the, the people fundamentally accepting to uh, work for the specialized uh, for these professionals basically, at least, you know, in part being mobilized themselves, but entrusting this shock force to the, what would become the militas fundamentally um, and this again is a great step uh, forward for the the same integration of Bohemia into German politics, right? Because they showed they could simply step into places like Thuringia. That I made a video about medieval Thuringia, by the way, for this historical region series. Um, that had been historically hegemonized by the Saxons. And so not all the Thuringians were really, you know, glad of that. It was surely a support locally for, for the Bohemia. They're relatively close lands, as, as you know. Properly, the operation into Germany is, is remarkable as much as especially the victories uh, that were scored over, you know, the Ottonian Saxons that at that point would actually reactivate, as you we were saying, what we call, uh, in fact, from also later times, the, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and that surely were forged in their... Uh, military prowess, also in this, in this relentless struggle with the Slavic frontier, right, because the Bohemians were not the only problem um, uh, of the uh, of the Ottonians, definitely, and uh, warfare with the Obotrites. We will see it now, because the Bohemians basically begin to side, uh, to side with the same Ottonians, because they reach a compromise. In fact, there is a, a very long 
um, war, right? Otto the first naturally is able in the end to pass to, to counterattack um, and uh, to besiege uh, a, a, a Bohemian castle owned by Boleslaus son in 950. Boleslaus uh, signs finally a peace treaty where he recognizes, you know, Otto's suzerainty and promised to resume the payment of, of, of the tribute, the due tribute to to ruler. Um, and at this point, uh, again, th- this is done by negotiating and um, surely by giving to the Bohemians also an important rank, after all, in um, in the Ottonian uh, establishment, uh, from a, especially from a military point of view, as um, the Bohemians serve with the Ottonians uh, against the Obotrites uh, in the north uh, on the Elbe. Uh, these were other Slavs, but they had not yet Christianized and they were resisting to, to the Ottonians. Um, the Bohemian troops as the king's allies, together with those of the entire kingdom of Eastern Francia, fought and won in the famous Battle of Lechfeld, in 955, which practically marked the uh, the end of the Magyar raids um, in um, in in Germany, right? And so the the final settlement, as we will see now from this stunned um, hungers, uh, you know, to enter within the, the Germanic sphere, influence accepting Christianization. This was great news for the Bohemians that, as we were saying before, were um, harassed. Um, you know, as the Germans by the, the con- continuous Magyar uh, invasions, and who were rewarded for their uh, for their military service with the lands of Moravia. In other words, this is the moment in which uh, the Bohemians are recognized properly by by the Holy Roman Emperor, the rule over. Uh, uh, Moravia as well, right? It will become altogether the kingdom, uh, say, at this point, the Duchy of Bohemia proper, but later the kingdom, and encompassing Moravia uh, within, right? So with a hierarchical, of course, um, superiority of Bohemia on Moravia. Um, Again, this is really a huge deal. It wouldn't put an end to the um, clashes between the, the Bohemians and the Germans, but that would mostly stabilize uh, the German and Bohemian establishment um, for good, right, in their, let's say, historical spheres uh, of influence, right? And we have Boleslaus I uh, ruling uh, from 935 uh, to uh, his death. Um, he fought. Uh, against again the the upper trites uh, in, in the north for uh, the Ottonians. What is interesting about this balance is the uh, willingness of Boleslav to uh, of Boleslav's there are, you know the, the two English versions um, to the the to to serve for the Ottonians on such uh, a relatively remote frontier like uh, the northern one. Um, he, uh, as we were saying, he fought uh, against the Obertrites. Um He put down uh, the, the uprising of two Slavic dukes, Stoignev and Nakon, in what was the Saxon Bidlungmark. I still haven't made a bit about that. You can start from uh, the Margravate of Brandenburg. Um, and uh, there's also one in the video about Thuringia and Saxon, we, we talk about these things. But the point of this um, was evidently from one side securing um, a, uh, the, uh, say, the Bohemia by, uh, um, say, directing uh, Ottonian force somewhere else. Right? This is what appears clearly that while say, the German colonization eventually would. Um, you know, politically take over certain parts of Poland, think about the Teutonic Order in the north, Bohemia remained sheltered, 
right, within itself, because, in fact, the um, German expansion took different routes, either in the north uh, or in the south, in, uh, among the, the Pannonian Slavs, etc. Um, and um, the, uh, the doing this also by securing, in fact, the military, that Bohemian military force would be employed um, in uh, not against right uh, the Ottonians, but at least to support their own uh, other expansion. It was again a, a a balanced equilibrium that somehow worked for the interest uh, of the country. Uh, the bishopric of Prague was founded in 973 during the reign of the Duke Boleslav the Second. The, the bishopric was subordinated to the Archbishop uh, of the one of the Archbishop of Mainz, right? That had most, uh, say, the, the, the influence on the Central European um, Archbishoprics, uh, albeit not being the the most powerful uh, of them, and at the same time the Premislite rulers used the German alliance in turn to consolidate their ru- internal rule uh, against a perpetually rebellious regional nobility, right? Just imagine the Germans when uh, locally, in spite of this, again, uh, father to son succession, Boleslas the second was the son of Boleslas the first, right? And the thing goes on more or less like that. Um, the imagine, like, the, the problems Right, when you needed the uh, Bohemian uh, uh, milites to serve, uh, and uh, or you needed just the, the trade not to be disrupted uh, with this country and so on, to witness the internal divisions, clashes, and so on. Of course, the uh, emperors didn't wish for this. They wanted stability, first of all, even at the cost of just... Um, making this country becoming legitimately more powerful and also more ambitious to, to some degree. But again, that was not the only uh, or even the main um, uh, concern of the German monarchs that also often f- fought against one another. You know, they had to quell rebellions and so on. So the Bohemians start in that regard also to support that, generally speaking, uh, orthodox, let's say, uh, the monarchic faction, right? This is interesting to point out that the most ambitious German noblemen, of course, were looking forward towards kind of a gra- still a weakening of monarchic power, uh, whereas the, the Bohemians could act as, as such still now, uh, already now, within within the um, de facto the kingdom, by not being one, uh, their own, uh, as well, they would still, however, remain part of the broader German, um, say, system later on, were a bit weaker. So they preferred actually to reinforce themselves internally by supporting, again, established authority and not signing, if not for the for the necessary, against somebody who wanted to destabilize the whole system. Because that was their warrant of of stability, generally speaking. Um, As a consequence, the Bohemian Principality was consolidated by the end of of the 10th century, right? At this point, the Premislids defeated their uh, white Croat rivals, um, unified fundamentally the Czech tribes, and established a form of concentrated uh, rule um, doesn't matter how then that the problems would be mostly switched towards dynastic um, the dynastic direction they were still promiscuous ruling either say as best you know the worst could happen was Bohemia going against Moravia right not further fragmentation and this is prodigious for the times and places again and it was a very fast consolidation. Uh, for again the, the standards involved and and this would of course confer to, to the duchy a never greater uh, political and institutional prestige um, in fact in 
as we were saying before, 1002, the Duke, uh, the Duke Vladivoy was enthaved with the Duchy of Bohemia from the hands of the same king, Henry II of Germany. And with this, he was recognized as a sovereign um, of the Holy Roman Empire. Right, and directly just had no other superior but the the emperor. After Vladivoy died uh, in the following year, the Polish Duke Boleslav I, known as the Brave, invaded Bohemia and Moravia, right, and ruled even namely uh, as Boleslav's the Fourth. Um, at this point, um, the um, the the local ruler was Yaromir. Um, had been cooperating with um, Boleslas, but uh, taking the opportunity of the, the Polish invasion to take out some rival clan and aggrandizing themselves, and so doing this also without the Polish consent, he was expelled. He was essentially brought back in power by the Germans. Uh, Henry II marched uh, on Bohemia, and, and the Poles fled, right? So the Promislis were reinstated. Um, uh, and again, uh, Yaromir received also the, the Dutch in fifth from the king. At this point, admittedly, uh, these proceedings were, institutional proceedings were not just meant to be necessarily permanent, right? Uh, titles could be conferred, uh, taken away, whatever. What is interesting here is the relation with Poland, because uh, the two countries, as we've seen, would always struggle for the control of Silesia. Uh, at some point, again, the, as we've seen, the, the Bohemians had been stronger. They arrived up to Krakow. Here, instead, we have the Poles that arrive up to uh, Prague. Um, Poland is definitely more powerful than, than Bohemia because it's larger. Um, it is also possibly more um, autocratic in nature. Um, paradoxically, even though it was more unstable, right? They, for, for exactly for that reason, they, they resorted to more impositive means. Um, and uh, this doesn't mean, however, that the Bohemians would always handle the worst of it. On the contrary, Poland was more easily fragmented, right, than Bohemia. And as you know, the PS had basically these ups and downs. And then for a long time, uh, their power went disgregated, especially in the, the late 12th and the 13th century and so on. So Bohemia comparatively was much more uh, functional, except it was now properly within and under uh, the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And so um, the the possibilities of movement were uh, were limited by that, but still confirming that kind of tidier, more orderly profile that seen uh, before. Uh, there was not much eventually could be done by both the Bohemians or the Poles to extend uh, their control in each other's territory. Because just you have like the Silesian uh, mountains, you have um, uh, just two different, uh, let's say, relatively well outlined geographical boundaries. Um, and so, in, while infiltration was out there, uh, part of Bo uh, of Silesia is historically uh, Bohemian, right? And there is um, surely a lot of that back and forth, even up to the end of the, of the Middle Ages, especially when these monarchies began to privatize and decline and there were some lords straddling, right, uh, say, their, with their power across the, these lines. Um, the two countries from this moment, from the beginning of the 11th century onwards, remained well distinguished, well, uh, well separated. As they had already been in practice. Um, the Duke... Uh, Bratislaus the first uh, of Bohemia uh, managed, by the way, to require the Moravian lands after this uh, upheaval uh, in 1019 or 1029. But um, these ones had also never, kind of, at this point, uh, escaped from the Bohemian sphere of influence. It would always remain under that. And again, the the practice was usually. You have uh, a Bohemian, uh, a, the Permislit uh, Duke ruling in Prague, and then you have either his 
uh, brother or, um, or, or, or son ruling in, in Moravia. Right, and then hope to hopefully succeed. And again, there were rivalries, were clashes, as we've seen before. Wenceslas had been killed by his brother, uh, who succeeded him, all this stuff. But aside, drama aside, um, this tandem, this dichotomy, Bohemia and Moravia, would remain uh, solid uh, right within the, the Dutch. About 1031, Bratislaus uh, invaded Hungary instead. Um, this was done like as a preemptive strike, let's say, um, because the the Hungarians had been compacting their their country alongside, as we've seen the 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 pattern of, of a of a feudal a monarchy, um, a Christian power, and generally speaking, again the Aust- as we were saying before, the Austrians, the um, the, the the Bohemians and the Hungarians always were struggling against one another in in between um albeit naturalistically beautiful places and perhaps exactly for this reason right that you have just a, a frontier right uh, th- this is not a place where big centers basically uh develop um you uh except on the danube but like the the rest is is open ground right that is used by these armies to face one another but being consistently uh, eccentric uh, relatively to their center of power, so more or less that's also how this 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 became the boundary of of the modern countries, right? A Czech Republic, uh, Slova- uh, Slovakia, at least, as would uh, was at this point a part of of Hungary, um, more or less, and uh, Austria. Um, so in um, in 1035, you have um, Bratislaus the first helping the Holy Roman Emperor against the Lusatians, that were a uh, people inhabiting again this Western Slavic frontier just north of Bohemia. Um, in 1039, the same Bratislaus uh, invaded Poland and managed even to capture Poznan. He uh, ravaged uh, Gnezno, um, and he even managed to conquer part of Silesia, including uh, Breslau. Um, this is what actually pushed the, the Polish r- rulers to move their capital to Krakow for good, because Gnezno had been, you know, already a quite important power uh, on its own. Now, at this point, the, the PS began again to, to concentrate power mostly in, in Krakow. In 1041, Bratislaus defeated uh, the German king's Henry uh, um, the Third in invasion of, of Bohemia itself at the battle at Brodek. Um, this engagement uh, was um, triggered uh, by uh, in fact the uh, the 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 same bohemian intervention in Poland, right? And so you understand here that the Germans want the Bohemians to stay still calm under imperial supervision, not disrupt the uh, the related broader international situation, attacking other countries with whom also they were trying to establish some sort of uh, if not subjection, but at least cooperation, it was the case of Poland that at some point could be hegemonized by the Germans, but it wouldn't uh, really happen. In any case, this invasion of Bohemia ends with a with a, an important defeat of the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, the uh, there are some interesting losses, German losses at the battle. Werner Maden, a Swabian noble, fell there. So. This was also the yet another indicator of Bohemian uh, soundness by this point. Over the next year, um, Henry, however, uh, managed to to besiege Bratislaus in Prague. Um, And this was necessary because uh, the Bohemian had not been given up uh, his possessions in Poland. he was recognized, however, uh, still the, the control over Moravia, 
right? That would have also probably not been not made much sense to trying to deprive the Bohemians of it. Would have just complicated the situation. In 1047, uh, uh, it was the same Henry III who negotiated a peace between Bratislaus and the Poles. Bratislaus' son, Bratislaus II, supported the Emperor Henry II against the papacy, that at this point was, as you know, uh, carrying out um, its Gregorian reforms and claiming, essentially, temporal, uh, at least a control on the temporal authorities. Um, and um, this triggered in Germany uh, essentially the rise of various anti-kings, uh, the rebellions, for example, in, in Saxony. Uh, but by this point, the, the monarchy, as you know, is uh, after Henry II, is passes to the, to the Franconians. So um, probably the Bohemians feel ever less threatened by in, probably the, the imperial power, and especially at this point, which... Uh, Germany is turning upside down, which almost the entire country is basically opposed um, to the king. Uh, and this was actually the right move to do, because um, the uh, the Bohemians, first of all, fight through these events. They do send military assistance to Henry IV. Um, they sign him. They enter Rome um, in 1083. Uh, together with him. So Henry um, rewarded Ratislaus II for a lifetime appointment for the first time as King Rex of Bohemia. Right? This will not kick in until, uh, as we said, the, the end of the 12th century. Um, but in 1085 it already happened uh, out of gratitude. Right? Um, so reinforcing, importantly, the prestige of, of, of the country. Again, if you look at the timeline, it, it's a relatively quick rise, right? It, of through a very, uh, say, good set of shrewd, you know, opportunities, well played. Um, but uh, the title is not uh, of, of king is not maintained further. Um, Bratislaus successors mostly had to cope with Silesia, with the fact that the Poles um, did not pay some um, uh, fees for the areas once resigned by Bratislaus the I. Um, but they were at least just typical conflicts uh, on that frontier, nothing uh, major, as we were saying, that the two systems were not destabilized significantly. Um, in uh, the 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 Bohemians keep playing the imperial card over and over. In eleven forty seven, the Bohemian Duke Vladislaus II accompanies the German King Conrad III, the first of the uh, Swabian dynasty, on the Second Crusade. That, as you know, was uh, a disaster. Um, uh, the duke uh, admittedly halted his march at Constantinople, so he he wouldn't um, go further seeing the, the Syrian mess. Um, in any case, um, the uh, Hohenstaufen can't count on the Premislids, who also maintain a connection with Thuringia, by the way, so that especially when the emperors were involved, as it starts happening from this time, especially onwards, uh, a lot of time in Italy, um, the this uh, the Permisleys even obtained certain important um, say that they are they are counted on at least uh, on maintaining the, the balance in Germany, playing for for the emperor. Uh, Frederick Barbarossa uh, rewards uh, the uh, Vladislavs the, the second. Uh, for his uh, for his military support given especially against uh, Milan in, in the war again uh, with, with the Lombard League by electing him King of Bohemia on January the 11th 1158 right so this makes the guy the second Bohemian king but not even at this time it was permanent for his successors and bear in mind that say the principle of um, 
uh, firstborn uh, kind of ducal succession was not yet uh, um, fully ingrained in Bohemia, right? It was moving toward that direction, but the sense was still that the Bohemians would elect their king in theory, right? In practice, especially, the, say, the dynastic system had been established for good. Just the, normally the brothers, this was typical of the Slavs, right? They said, you know, it's not your son, it's my, my, my nephew that has to rule, but it's me, right? We are, we are that generation, and the last of us must, must reign before our children. So th- this is what triggered some clashes, where even within the same Bohemia. But gradually, you start having a, properly a, a direct firstborn um, uh, male uh, succession. Um, Bohemia is also developing uh, internally, right? The uh, mining of tin and silver in the Ore Mountains began more or less in the in the early 12th century. Uh, at least there are ever more consistent capitals that the Bohemian dukes can invest uh, for this exploitation. Of course, there is new technology around, but the, the important thing is that the, the local marks have enough resources, right, being collected from the system with more permanent stru- uh, structures um, that allow such investment. Um, as we were saying before, uh, Otto Carr, the first of Bohemia, supports Philip of Hohenstaufen against his wealth rival Otto IV. Um, at the time of the succession after the death of Henry VI, Holy Roman Emperor. Um, so the Bohemians are faithful to uh, the House of Swabia, and this uh, brings them the award of royal crowning in 1198. Finally, as an hereditary title, right? Even if the same uh, emperors had decided not to give too much uh, to these Bohemians, just to reward them for their service, but uh, at personam. Well, at this point, um, actually, the the empire will start in a few decades to to fall apart. At least, you know, the German monarchy as such. Um, and the Bohemians would consistently uh, profit from this. All right, they, they were powerful enough at this point, um, also because well the orange stuff and went down for unrelated reasons. But the um, uh, the Ottokar II will become the most powerful prince of the empire. So the actually the fragmentation of uh, of Germany specifically would favor the rise of Bohemia before the the one of the Habsburgs put an end uh, to it, right? Um, the, the Bohemians have been quite uh, unprejudiced. Like, if you look, for example, at Wratislaus uh, uh, II, like he uh, he didn't give a damn about the fact that the Pope uh, was supporting, uh, was excommunicating the Emperor. He would just play with that. I mean, the Bishop of Prague had opposed uh, the Duke, uh, but this one had not really cared. So this um, fealty for the emperors, as interested as it was, was, was really um, evidently um, convenient right, for, for the Dutch. Uh, even with some level of you know, personal um, you know, uh, kind of perhaps it has to do with the kind of traditional background, the idea of the Slavs recognizing kind of more the the sense of the union of the universal power in one single ruler rather than the the provocative side of, of say of the church as such as still necessary in that system and evidently so for what was happening in the Holy Roman Empire given that these emperors weren't quite that uh, successful at the end of the day so um uh, this this is the question sometimes we should pose ourselves like how and why what did they think and believe aside from what they they saw as more or less convenient right this is an aspect that I do not get very much covered uh, online when talking history uh, um, in any case um, 
it's in 1212 that Otkar the first bore the title king since 1198 and a formal edict by the Hohenstaufen Emperor Frederick II, known as the Golden Bull of Sicily, confirmed the royal title for Ottokar and his descendants, further, uh, whereby his duchy was formally raised to a kingdom. Um, the Bohemian king uh, would at that point be exempt basically from all future obligations to the Holy Roman Empire, except, of course, the you know the the, the imperial say the, the fealty to the emperor, the participation in in the imperial councils. So they didn't want Bohemia to move away you know, in a broader sense, and to actually provide the emperor with three hundred knights uh, as a condition, which at the time is not really um, nothing, right? It's of course it's not an army, but it's still a precious contingent for for this uh, realm. So you see, interestingly enough, how um, still how all balanced between a the actually a strong emperor up to this point, or at least one that could impose this power in Bohemia and the uh, the, the latter's ambition and uh, further consolidation. We would be surprised by how limited sometimes these choices were um, in the ground kind of rooted um, realpolitik, like how much, like what was your expectation as an early 13th century Bohemian king, right, regarding the, the, the resources of your country? How much you could levy, how much you could use that to say found new uh, castles, because they cost really a lot, right? This it's before, especially the mid 13th century. We are still in, a, in especially in these lands, in quite uh, you know still primitive, archaic times, right? And you, you, but most of course of the struggle is uniquely political. It's about convincing. Um, the the system to to support um, the the monarchy and to follow that specific line would could be one in the expectation of, say further expansion under a single uh, control or you know just uh, making the nobility thinking they can carve their own little realms within themselves so it, it's always about conflict struggle war and um, this international recognition is also very important because it doesn't depend just what happens internally um, there is a bigger picture and uh, definitely uh, the especially in the second half of the 13th century Bohemia will uh, combine all these um, aspects to um, to try also to put an end uh, especially at this point by to the uncontrolled rise of the nobility that was at this point starting to um, feudalize to the degree that uh, we have highlighted also for other central European countries for the same Germany telling the truth but it's mostly about Poland Hungary um, the essentially the failure of the centralization of the monarchy right the fact that the nobility would elect monarchs mostly calling them from abroad um, so that they wouldn't entrench themselves too much locally it wasn't necessarily functioning like that eventually but still um, exercising a level of private power that had been eroding the public one and thus preventing the possibility of these countries to have a long life, um, or if if not so, well, think about Poland, right? In in an independent fashion, and especially with a monarchy capable of exploiting um, the uh, all the uh, the opportunities that could arise, because because these lands had an important potential, right? And Bohemia was perhaps, in relative terms, the country that embodied this the most, because it doesn't matter it being the smallest, still um, the smallest monarchy, still it. Uh, had uh, uh, become so as we've seen very fairly rapidly, fairly orderly, and with uh, a bright future. Right, if things had gone especially differently, and then the the the, the history 
of the um, the Bohemian Crown we will make in another video. You know how thing, wh things went uh, after the extinction of the Permislids. You have the, the Luxembourgs installing themselves. Um, then the end of the same dynasty in 1437 with Emperor Sigismund, and then essentially the kingdom of, of Bohemia uh, passing uh, under the rule of the Habsburgs um, until uh, World War I, so that's basically it, but we have seen this in other videos, so we'll keep making uh, others if, if you're interested. We are, I'm trying to cover all those um, areas uh, that we haven't talked about, first of all, but even in this case, um, uh, that we have or where we have already of course uh, at least um, you know seen other periods or other aspects of the same countries reinforcing in fact uh, homogeneously right for how much we talk about one country we should talk about the other kind of centering because I think this can be a base for further videos to make also more sense because I I have no idea how people watch these videos, um, in which order, but I always start from the um, from the belief that even though, of course, uh, it's good to watch, in theory, everything I've done, this is not really possible, so I try always to give some degree of, uh, you know, completion for, for every video, at least about the essentials. Uh, and then if you want to know about some other aspect, you can go see another video and uh, reinforcing those same essentials along the way. Because without that, there's really no chance to to learn medieval history, that, or history, any history for that matter. But medieval history is important uh, in as much as it shows such differences, uh, such divides, and it cannot simply be told by a you know, single superficial explanations, let's say, uh, about uh, this or that other, mm, say, generality and not observing what these uh, individual countries did on, on their own, because uh, otherwise, what's, what's the sense of understanding the other's policies? You never presume that you can learn uh, history uh, just looking at one country uh, it means you will never know anything even about that one <laughs> you know, um, doesn't make any sense right it's properly against any intelligence and I don't uh, I don't make videos like that um, for today however I stop it here I just hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content as always i thank you heartily for listening to me i wish you a nice time and see you next time